First, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zeng Kong. Homage to His Holiness the 16th Kamapa. And homage to Master Dukdan Darji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar and the main deity of the good practice tonight. The medicine Buddha of the Eastern Lapis Lazuli realm. Namo Baisaya Guru. Sumo Tanzan Katso to the city. All Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma assistants, directors of temples and chapters, and all disciples. Uh, all these disciples present here and over the internet. Good evening. How do you do? Greetings in all different languages. I still. Shanae. Ola Miko. Ola Miko. Kekerong Mucho. Yapi, Pudin Pudin, Kompangwa. Today, we practice the Medicine Buddha. The Lapis Lazuli realm of Medicine Buddha has also manifested many miracles on Grandmaster. I have also met uh, Medicine Buddha and the Sunlight Radiance Bodhisattva, the Moonlight Radiance Bodhisattva, and also the retinue of Medicine Buddha and his 12 Medicine Generals. So, due to Medicine Buddha's uh, bestowal, Grandmaster regained his health. I remember I went to Chokyu in Korea and paid homage to the Medicine Buddha. And on the way back, as I closed my eyes around my I could see rays of light, and then I saw the Medicine Buddha. And I also saw the Sunlight Radiance Bodhisattva, the <coughs> Moonlight Radiance Bodhisattva, the Eight Great Bodhisattvas, and the Twelve Medicine Generals of the Medicine Buddha. So 
So when we visited uh, Chongyu in Korea, I knew then that I would recover from my illness because when I paid homage to medicine Buddha, I carried the illness with me when I went there. But when I had the vision of medicine Buddha, I knew that the Buddha would help me. That's how it happened. It's very sublime. Actually, in Sukhavati, the western pure land of Atmos Bliss, and then the eastern realm of Lapis Lazuli, are very famous. So one is Sukhavati, and the other one is the Lapis Lazuli realm. Of all the other pure lands, these two are very famous. So both the Western Pure Land of Atmos Bliss and the Eastern Pure Land of Lapis Lazuli Realm are both can be very similar. They are you can go to either one or both. Some people said that they only want to go to the east and not to the west. And there's some people that believe that the Abirati, Abirati Pure Land is better, which is the Pure Land of Marvelous Joy. You know, in Sukhavati, there are no women, not very many women at all in Sukhavati. But in Abirati, there are many beautiful women, which many people like. Like today is the Mid-Autumn Festival. So here I would like to wish you a very happy Mid-Autumn Festival. Many many ladies are wearing wearing uh, the ancient outfit of Chang Er. But there's only one Chang Er, but we have over ten of them here. So you should vote which one is the true Chang Er. Which is the moon lady, the lady of the moon. <laughs> that Chang Er is a very slim, has a very good figure. Because Chang Er, which is the Chinese goddess of the moon, flies to the moon after she took the immortal elixir, her body became very light and flew to the moon. But our Chang'e here, um, not bad. But they would fall if they try to fly. They would fall back down after a while. But wearing the ancient outfit and put on the makeup and dressed up, they're all beautiful. Really beautiful. This is joke about the Mid Autumn Festival. Uh, alongside Chang Er, there is an Wu Gang. Uh, 
This is rabbit that always follows Tang'e. But why the rabbits love Tang'e? And the answer is because her legs are like carrots. Oh, in Chinese, it's daikons. But since Chang'e has legs like daikons, they would fall. She would fall if she on the way flying to the moon. So here I would like to wish all of you a very happy Mid-Autumn Festival. And I can celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival here when the moon is round and the people gather together. And very grateful to many disciples coming from afar to celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival together. It's truly a, a rare and cherished occasion. Let me share a joke first. Xiao Ming asked his dad, Is it true that the fathers always know more than the children? And dad answered, Of course. And then Ming asked again, So who invented electricity? Edison. And then Ming asked again, and why Edison's father did not invent the electricity? And that said, get out of here. This is question and answer. So, when summer comes, who's nicest to you? The answer is the mosquitoes. Because they always give me the red pockets. Yeah, this play of words of Chinese. Like, the red bombs on the skin. And they insist of giving them to me. So, a man driving a $30,000 car and $300,000 car, what's the difference between them? The answer is, the lady sitting on the passenger seat is different. Now we'll do the question and answer. Indonesia. From Indonesia, the last name is Zhang, did not say the name. With the greatest respect to Grandmaster, I suffer greatly and very confused. I have been dating a man for three years, and the relationship is good. 
and we want to get married. But his father rejected me upon seeing my face because I'm not that beautiful. And not much younger than he is. So his dad asked his son to forget me. Else he would break he would uh, break the father and son relationship. The questions, one, so what great merit or great good deed should we do so that we can be together with the earth, our loved ones? The second question, if we choose to be together, will we create bad karma? Is this kind of love wrong? So she's been together with the man for three years and is having a good relationship and wanted to get and want to get married, but the boyfriend's dad disapproved. Let me answer question number two. If we choose to be together, will we create bad karma? Is there anything wrong with this kind of love? My answer is. If the man wants to marry you, even when his dad disapproves, that's not bad karma. And that kind of love is not wrong. There's nothing wrong with that kind of love. My answer to the second question. And my reasoning is you are marrying the son and you are not marrying the father. Your marriage is disapproved by the father. But you're marrying the son, even if the father disapproves. That's your business. It's not related to his father. So you're not creating bad karma, and there's nothing wrong with your love. My answer to the second question. As for the first question, if there is a great or good deeds that we can do to change our faith, what should we do so that we can be together with our loved one? This is a big question. What kind of good deeds can change our faith and destiny? Anyone can answer? To change his father so that he approves his son to marry this woman. Someone is raising his hand. Mm -hmm. 
yes, dear Grandmaster, Simu, and everybody, um, if someone um, would like to change their very deep karmic hindrance, so very deep karma, please take refuge under Grandmaster Lu. <laughs> and secondly, please ask for empowerment of Mahama Yuri. That's the only, only Yiba can help you clean up all deep karma. Only one, Maha Mayuri. That's it. Thank you. Translator. Oh, oh, gosh, it's good. Gagang Shi Jie Jiang de Yishi Zi Zi Shuo, Shi Wang Ta Lai Gui Yi Gen Ben Shang Shi, Gui Yi Kong Chue Da Fu Mu, Then all is good. 有这个加持力就可以了。我想，那我我回答一下好了啦，那个问题。嗯。人跟人之间的缘分哦，有天生的，有后来的。Affinity between people。应该是那个男的爸爸看到这个。Inborn。And some are created in this life. So this father found the look of this woman to be ordinary, and so prohibited his son to marry her. So two things: one is this Dharma sister. Can do a practice and visualize grandmaster to radiate red light, and have the boyfriend and his dad to be sitting together practicing, and that's a magnetizing practice. So our lineage would go to radiating red light upon you and the boyfriend and his father. So that they start to be amiable and like you. So you can recite the Rud Guru mantra or the magnetizing mantra. But this one, the second one, is the boyfriend should put in some effort. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to marry her. Uh, there is a more pragmatic way that this woman This is more realistic. Like I have mentioned that I prayed to the Medicine Buddha that this woman can save some money and go to Korea <laughs> and stay there for half a year and then come back. Then she would have a new face. She would change her face. When you visit Korea, you would know that all the beauties are man-made. The medical science is very advanced now. Face. I mean, you can see it on the internet, before and after. 
how the faces look and the change. Even the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas will not recognize you anymore. Not to mention human beings. So, when the father sees the woman again, the lady again, that he would not recognize the origin of her and would agree to the marriage. All she needs is six months and she can change her, the shape of her face, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, everything. And you can change to become like a, a movie star. You know, like the Korean, the men all handsome and the beautiful are very gorgeous. That in beauty contests, like over 20 faces are all the same because they all came from the same plastic surgery, plastic surgery clinic. I saw a photo of a beauty contest from Korea one time. And all the faces look the same. So I'm telling you, the easiest way or the most pragmatic way is not to practice Dharma. But just buy a plane ticket to Korea and stay there for six months. And when you come back and go to your boyfriend, and he would he will not recognize you. That would be the most pragmatic. This is joke. A woman went to Korea to have a plastic surgery, and she became very beautiful. And she wanted to surprise her husband. So when she got home, she knocked on the door, and the husband opened the door and saw her. So the woman said, you don't recognize me? And the husband was very pleased and said, Hey, come on, get come in. My wife's not home. It's a joke, of course. So you can change it. Nowadays, it's very advanced. Don't be scared. Just do that, okay? <laughs> you can change looks. Especially if you're a young lady, it's very easy nowadays. And the most famous one is in Korea. You go to Seoul in Korea. All the cosmetic surgery clinics on the whole street or area. And you go there and they would show you photos of beautiful ladies and you can just point to anyone and you can become like her. And you need to stay for a period of time because it takes time to work on the whole face. One day, a great master saw a scorpion fell f f into the water. So he extended his hand and tried to pick it up. 
and bitten by it. But the great master did not give up and continued to try to pick it up. And, also, and bitten again and again. So there's a youngster that asked the master, you know, the scorpion bit you. Why are you still trying to save it? And the master said, well, it's the scorpion's nature to bite. And for me to pick it up is my nature. How can I give up my nature just because of the nature of the scorpion? So the youngster was very touched. So you're so kind. And the great master said, that's not my nature. My nature is, I just want to try to taste something that I haven't tasted before. <laughs> so, he, ha he hasn't eat, he's never tried scorpion, so he tried to pick it up. It's a joke, but Grandmaster has tasted scorpions. I have eaten many things that other people have not. Because <laughs> you become a great master after you've eaten many things. Only after you've eaten many things. Have you eaten ants? No. Grandmaster has eaten ants before. Have you eaten a mouse? No. Grandmaster has eaten a mouse. Have you eaten a poisonous snake? Grandmaster has eaten a poisonous snake. Uh, you need to eat all those before you become a master. So this is talking about proficient in all profundities of the Supreme Dharma. Now we're talking about the Vimalakirti Sutra. Proficient in all profundities of the Supreme Dharma. We know, according to Vimalakirti, it is right that the world and the universe is inherently true emptiness. Everything is empty. Everything, all Dharma, is intrinsically empty. However, because there is existence amidst emptiness, even existence is emptiness, and emptiness is existence, and we don't differentiate between the two. Proficient in all profound meanings of the Supreme Dharma. Buddha Dharma is extremely deep and vast, and it's extremely marvelous and sublime. So you know, we cannot say everything is empty, because if everything is empty, that's called cutting or annihilation. If everything is existing, that's called eternalism. And you cannot have either of them. 
if we say everything is empty, then how about cause and effect? You say the cause and effect is empty, karma is empty, then there's no karma, that's wrong. In Buddha Dharma, we talk about cause and effect, causes and conditions. Therefore, we cannot say that everything is empty, because if you go to the extreme or you bias toward emptiness, then that would be annihilation. annihilation. But if you are biased toward existence, that would be eternalism, then everything exists. That's not Buddha Dharma. So what is the profound meaning so everything is arising due to causes and conditions. So in true emptiness, there is existence. So the deep part is emptiness and the subtle marvelous part is existence. So you cannot lean toward either emptiness or existence. So Buddha Dharma is not at the center of this two either. We can only talk about the middle way. So Sakyamuni Buddha once gave an analogy. And this analogy is like a guitar with the strings. If the strings are too tight, then the strings are bound to break. But when the strings are too loose, then it would be impossible to play beautiful music. Therefore, everything needs to be just right. That's the meaning. That everything is just right. You cannot lean toward either emptiness or existence. So it needs to be just in the right condition. My home in the past was in Kaohsiung. Xi Community Li Seng Heng Road when I was little. Lin Seng Road. It's the dormitories of the power company. And there was a, a, a board with the writing on it. So human life is like the hmm, the man who's losing the horse. So that had a big influence on me. So human life is like that story, the anecdote about a man who lost his horse, which went like this. Um, the man had a stallion, a horse, and the horse got lost. So he lost the horse. So the neighbors thought, he must suffer greatly because his horse disappeared. So 
so he had a big loss. But the old man was still calm and at peace and just regular. And after a period of time, the horse came back with a, a, a female horse. So the neighbors were very happy. So you lost your stallion, and now it came back with the uh, with the female horse. <laughs> But uh, the old man was still very calm, no a mayor, so he's, he wasn't happy, he wasn't sad. And then his only son rode on the mayor, the female horse. But it didn't go well, so he fell from the horse and injured his leg. So he became handicapped. So the neighbor said, Oh, it wasn't a joyous occasion. That's a calamity. He's handicapped now. And then the old man, still very calm, he didn't feel happy or sad. And then the country is uh, calling on all the men to go into the military. Only the son of the old man, because of his injured leg, he did not have to go to war. So the neighbors thought that all their children, all their sons had to go to wars, but not the son of this old man. So they felt happy for him. And all they after they went to the military, they all died. So in that village, the only young man was the son of that old man. <laughs> and he married all the ladies in the village. <laughs> because there's only this young man, there's only this man in the whole village. So all the ladies married him, but this old man never, always uh, constant, he did not feel sad, did not feel happy. So this old man did not lean toward either sides. And I have written this phrase that everything is in the best arrangement, that uh, Good fortune and bad lucks are calm together. If it's not good luck, it's bad luck. So in human lives, you should have such a mindset, such a viewpoint to see through human lives. Then you would cut off all many worries and afflictions. What is Buddha Dharma for is to stop all afflictions and all attachments. To completely master Buddha Dharma, the profundities of Buddha Dharma. You should be like the example I just gave. You should live like that, very at ease, and uh, be in it, so you don't f grieve because of calamities, and you don't feel joyful because of good fortunes. 
so you handle everything calmly and with ease and everything is in the best arrangement only then your heart mind would truly be unperturbed and unmoved just like the old man so the writing at the placard at my home my at my home was that human life is just like the old man losing his horse that's why I never feel ecstatic about anything and I never feel sorrowful about anything either that means you have been proficient in all profundities of the Supreme Dharma. Then you can truly comprehend that everything is the best arrangement. So Buddha Dharma is not about the extremes, which means you should not have a view of annihilation nor eternalism. You should not have either of them. Everything in the world is about good and bad lucks together. Something that you think is good luck, actually it's bad luck, or vice versa. Things that you think is bad luck, actually it's good luck. That's why we should be uh, very at ease living in this world and to lighten our afflictions. And if you do, then you're proficient in all profundities of the Supreme Dharma. Otherwise, your afflictions is endless. Some people worry or troubled about spouses. Some are troubled uh, with their children. And before then, they are troubled about their grandchildren. No, don't be troubled by any of those. Don't compare with other people. Don't look up and don't look down. You don't compare. Never compare. Just live your own life. So, be mindful of this. The profundities of the Dharma, of Buddha Dharma. <coughs> then you can cut off your attachments and afflictions. Then you are not afflicted anymore. Some people are attached to the Dharma. If you are so attached to the Dharma, then you become too attached. That's also wrong. So you don't necessarily have to be attached even to the Dharma. Like some people say, they have spiritual response, how come not me? then you're so attached to get spiritual experiences, then that would be an affliction too. So in your Buddhist practice, if you st strive for spiritual experience, actually it's fine either you have the spiritual experience or not, because you omit the profound and marvelous Dharma. It's fine whether you have spiritual experiences or not. If you understand this, then you will not be so 
clinging or grasping it, or clinging to it. Like some people have transcendent power, how come not I? But so what? You don't want to strive for transcendent power, because if you do, that's wrong. It will come naturally, the same with spiritual experiences. Everything just naturally. No transcendent power, no spiritual experience. As long as you have the heart, the Buddha will come and guide you to the pure land. So that's my simple explanation of this phrase, proficient in all profundities of the Supreme Dharma. I just use an analogy, an example. Otherwise, it's too much to talk about. There's too much, because profound meanings of the marvelous Dharma will cover too many things, covers too many things. Inherently, everything is illusory and empty. However, you cannot be attached that they are always empty and illusory. Then you can just do whatever you want. Because cause and effect still exist. The simple karma, as I have talked about before. When we see smoke, we know there must be fire. That's cause and effect. Today, my car had to drive to the clinic. And I saw there was lots of smoke above the the burner, the spirit, the spirit money burners. And I thought, oh no, the neighbors would complain. But then as I drove, I saw there were many smokes everywhere. And then I knew. And then I realized there must be a forest fire somewhere. Because the whole area was hazy for the whole afternoon. Yeah, this whole area. So I knew. So when you see smoke, you would know there must be fire. So this, this is cause and effect, right? When there is cause, there must, when you see an effect, you know there must be a cause. When we see water, we know there must be fish fish in the water. When you see smoke, you know there must be fire. When you see the earth temperature is increasing, you know there's earthquake coming. Because that's how they detect when the earth temperature is increasing, it's, it's very possible to have earthquake or volcanic eruption. But living in this world, although we have COVID-19, the ongoing pandemic, with many people died, uh, created problems, uh, concerns for many people. But there's also a benefit that the ladies don't have to put on makeup anymore. They don't have to put on makeup. 
because they cover their face every day. They don't need to put on lipstick. So that's the benefit. So if we wear a mask, then we don't get infected with the colds and flus. So in this world, there are good things and bad things. There are auspicious things and disasters, and there are also good and bad fortunes. So that's the profound meaning. And when you have obtained the wisdom of true emptiness and the wisdom of discernment, which is the Dharma, if you have comprehended the wisdom of discernment and how to harmonize it, then there would be the profound meaning, deep and marvelous profound meaning. That's Sky Master's explanation, but typical explanations would say everything arises due to causes and conditions and ceases due to causes and conditions. And what is causes? What are the causes? What are the conditions? And by penetrating Buddha Dharma, you would understand the the prof meaning of the profound and marvelous, the profound and marvelous meaning. <laughs> Mm, this joke is long, but this is also profundities. A beautiful lady was a CEO, and after she died, she had tea with God, and God found her to be very glib, very uh, eloquent, and will uh, create uh, disturbances in heaven, so God dispatched her to hell. And then a week later, the Yama king of hell complained to God, oh, please uh, transfer her. And God asked, so what happened? You know, she has uh, persuaded all the little ghosts in hell. Every day they had meetings and uh, activated them into like unions and and uh, dance, a line dance, and, and uh, like, you know, making sure satisfaction in work and nobody listened to me anymore. So they, they did like reviews, performances, and uh, they had created structures and procedures. And and also about uh, bonus and punishments and reviews and everything. So nobody is listening to me anymore. And then God said, okay, let her go back to heaven then. And then a month later, the Yamaki asked God, God, that marketing woman, how is it? How is the marketing woman? And God stopped and replied, you have made three mistakes. You call me God, that's wrong. You should call me manager. Second, in this world, there's no God. Only the customers are God. 
And third, I have no time to talk to you. I have to make a report. So this is about two streams. So in this joke, there is this profundities. Think about it. So about this world, there are wars, pandemic, or epidemics, famines. And there's no need to be too sad about it. And for the climate, the global warming, there's no need for you to concern yourself. No matter what. So I often said, what is the future of Tributor School? Many reporters ask me that. What is your plan for your Tributor School? What is your hope for Tributor School? My answers were always not, nothing. And my answers were very sublime. I would say that I am not related to Tubuda School. Tubuda School is unrelated to me. That's how it is. That everything is natural, that it develops naturally. And the interviewers ask a lot of questions about Tubuda School. So what you meant is you don't care whether Tubuda School will live or die? My answer would be it's fine whether Tributor School exists or not. Anything is fine. You need to understand this. Then you will not be afflicted about Tributor School. Then Tributor School will not be your affliction. We just do our best and put in the effort, and we don't concern ourselves about the result. So this is after we understand about the deep and marvelous profound meaning. So like will Grandmaster go to Sukhawati, will, will Grandmaster return to the Mahatwin Lotus Ponds, will he go to the to hell or I will not care. Why? Because Vimalakirti said that the great bodhisattvas followed the mind of the sentient beings and be reincarnated in the six rebirth realms. So they can go to hells, hungry ghost realms, animals, or azura, human realms, or the heavenly realms. They don't have to go to the Sukhawati or Mahatwin Lotus Ponds. If you're a great Bodhisattva, you just deliver them according to the mind of sentient beings.
Om Mani Padme Hum. So the great Bodhisattvas would be proficient or understand the deep and marvelous profundities of meaning of the Dharma.